Can you? Hey, good evening, everybody. Welcome to a Friday Night Light St. Joe's Football. Mark Sagan's here along with, hopefully, Paul Nanska. She'll be here shortly after a long ride here in from Buffalo. Just give us a couple minutes to get set. We'll be all ready to go. We just started here on a beautiful night in downtown Erie, Pennsylvania. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll fill you in as we go along here. So we just started. I'll get my bearings. 11.20 to go, and the Marauders with it on second down, and Davis has it. He fumbles, and let's see who's got it, and Cathedral Prep falls on it. So an early turnover by the Marauders, and Prep is in good position to start the football game off. Just give me a chance to catch my breath. There is zero parking. <laughs> around this complex. So, Paul Nask is about parking the car. We only got lost once. And other than that, we are good to go here. So, we'll set the players for you here in a second, but Prep will start at their own 14-yard line. This offensive machine first play of the game, and it's a pass Incomplete. They've got a late flag that comes in here. See what the penalty is. Yep, looked like probably a little face guarding on the receiver. Number one team in Pennsylvania at Cathedral Prep. Averaging close to 400 yards per game. 211 in the air, 180 on the ground. They're 6-0. and Max Preps has them ranked 90th in the country. The Marauders come in at 4-1. and Ranked six in the state of New York. So a penalty will make it a first and five for prep now at the St. Joe's seven yard line. Quarterback for prep is. Uh, Fesler and he throws into the end zone corner and prep quick touchdown six nothing off the Marauder turnover and what could be the beginning of a long night here in Erie, PA. Great crowd here tonight. They've got their Hall of Fame inductions were this evening and I, they got a big crowd here. We're probably three four thousand, I guess, maybe more. Beautiful stadium down here on West 12th Street, just uh, on the corner of Cherry. We know all of Erie, Pennsylvania in and out, my friend. Mr. Schneider sitting right next to me, taking in all the action. The extra point is good, and Cathedral Prep up 7 nothing. And what we were afraid of... Uh, Paul and I on our way into the stadium tonight talking if Cathedral Preps watched any of the last Marauder football games on tape. You know, our cornerbacks have been suspect to throws into the end zone, and that's how they started it off here for a 7 nothing lead off the Nigel Davis turnover. <laughs> My partner in crime has arrived. <laughs> Where'd you park? Back in Buffalo? <laughs> if this window opens or not, but... <laughs> Well, I'll tell you what, brother. It's a good thing I ran into the baseball coaches. They told me how to get in here. They did? Yeah, sorry. I went around in the front. Yeah, thanks for that. Yeah. I can't, I can't read that one. They were down in Disney. The JV. Oh, yeah, the JV Cross Country won uh, uh, the uh, tournament down in Walt Disney, the 5K run. Yeah. Varsity as well? Varsity finished third. Varsity finished third down there. Up oh, and Belafato was second overall out of 25 teams. So here we go, the kickoff, and it's taken by Miles Young, and he brings it out to the prep 24-yard line. You got your breath? I'm good, brother. <laughs> I'm good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> where I did, tell you where what, did we, you park? We got it right at the edge. We're going to be able to get out of here fast? We're first car out of the building. <laughs> That's good. Oh, Seeing that God. we were the last ones in. Yeah. 
Anyway. All right. Let's get. I need some rosters, my friend. Let's we'll get ourselves organized. Who's playing? <laughs> I believe we're playing. <laughs> there you go. There you go. I, yeah. So Davis in the uh, Wildcat will call him the quarterback to early this evening. He fakes the handoff to both Payne and Tyler Hill, and no gain there. Maybe a loss of uh, one or two there. Bring it second and twelve. Well, tough task for the Marauders tonight coming in. Obviously a little nicked up and coming into an absolutely hostile environment. What a crowd here tonight. Hey, if anybody goes on Route 5 and they get to the Lakeshore Country Club, they've, you've gone too far. <laughs> yeah, that guy gave us some faulty directions, <laughs> my man. <laughs> so second and 12, 10.23 to go. We just started prep in front, 7 nothing. Off of Nigel Davis' early fumble. Davis keeps it himself, trying to find some room off the right side. Still on his feet, out over the 30-yard line. Mark it around the 31, gain of about eight there. How about this facility, pal? Very nice. Beautiful very, very stadium. Nice. I had, they walked me through the concession stand area, which is like a full indoor facility. I mean, just crazy. Ooh, whoever's working the camera, you're getting me dizzy. Oh, I can. Yeah, we'd yep. like a big shout out to uh, Uppers Polly here, recovering from his surgery over at Elderwood on Englewood, or excuse me, in Eigert. Uppers, we know you're listening in tonight, buddy. Hope you're feeling better. Yeah, we drove by and waved to you on our <laughs> way here. <laughs> we did, we did. Good. So it's third down. Davis going to keep it himself again, finds room right side up the sideline, and. It'll be good enough for a first down at it around the 38-yard line. Mark, there's a formation I was talking to Coach Gilbert about over the last couple of weeks that they were going to break out tonight. It's a bit of a diamond formation. Two running backs flank Davis on each side, and there's still one behind him. So it gives him a lot of options out of a, out of a read option, spread option offense to run. So you're going to see some Miles Young tonight. Obviously, Rod Payne. And you may see any assorted number of guys in that backfield tonight because uh, the Marauders are a little thin on the uh, specialists yeah, right here's now. Here's that formation there. They get double tight end. Bring Young in motion. And he gives the ball to Rod Payne, who's stopped in the backfield. Big loss there of about five yards. Bring up second and 15. On Hall of Fame here tonight here. Yeah, Craig K- uh, Kowinski from 1970 went in. He was a uh, big swimmer and such and such. And uh, don't forget about Mike Henkel of 1974, great running back in the backfield. And Eddie Henkel, his younger brother, also. Timmy Wagren right behind us on stats, also uh, head of our security force to get us in the stadium. Apparently, well, I got escorted go. by the baseball Second program. down, Davis is going to throw. Under pressure, can he get away? He does. Still on his feet, still running. Great run. Oh, boy. He made uh, three yards out of a loss of could have been five on that play. So bring up third down. Yeah, certainly, Mark, the pressure tonight is going to be on the Marauders' front lines both ways, offensively and defensively. This Cathedral Prep team comes in. They can do it through the air or on the ground, averaging a couple of hundred yards through the air and almost 180 on the ground. So... Double threat for this Marauder defense right now offensively. This line's got to hold up, and if they have to move the ball through the air, they've got to give Nigel a little bit of time. Yeah, they're going to need to try to sustain some drives here, keep the clock running on the ground, but these big thirds now, third and 13, almost have to throw the football. Yep. There's that diamond formation again. Fakes it, and he's going to throw under big pressure again, and down he goes. The uh, swarming defense. Late flag on the field here, Mark. Late flag. Where's it coming in from? It came in from the side, so let's see maybe if there's maybe a face match, perhaps. We'll see. But they are talking it over here, right about the Marauder 25. We'll get the signal now from the official. Yeah, it looks like Bob Schreck. Did we get him delivered here tonight? Well, they're putting (laughs) it down on the 23. So that'll be where the play ended. It's a dead ball, personal foul on oh, Prep. Oy, oh, that'll boy. be a 15 and a first down. That's a big one there for Prep. Big one for St. Joe's, well, actually. True. Yeah. Ah, Bob Shrek's skinnier than this guy. 
<laughs> well, as we're looking out, uh, October, of course, breast uh, breast cancer awareness month, and some of the uh, cathedral prep kids sporting some of the pink that is emblematic of that cause. If you join us out at the field in two weeks when St. Joe's takes on time, and there will be a uh, there will be a lot of pink out in the field. As Ad Pro Sports, the Buffalo Bills, and the ECMC Lifeline Foundation are sponsoring. Breast Cancer Awareness Month through the high schools along with the Bills. A big uh, big endeavor and a great cause. Well, I guess it's not an automatic first down, so it'll be fourth. Post play, post so they play, mark yeah. it off, yes. So Davis is in to punt it away. Standing at his 26. Oh, it's blocked. And it is blocked. You are right, and out of bounds it goes at the... 38-yard line, so Prep will start there. That a one, block punt. That one's on the punter. He's got to get rid of that quicker. He took a long time to get rid of that, and I don't know if he I don't know if he muffed the uh, the snap a little bit, but uh, he took quite a bit of time to get rid of that ball, and it was blocked basically back to the line of scrimmage, which is the Marauder 37. Yep. And uh, you're in a bit of a danger zone here. Tonight's going to be tough enough, but you can't have error football on your first two possessions. Yeah, Prep looks like they're sporting about a 65-man sideline here. <laughs> Three receivers right, two to the left. All alone is the quarterback, Billy Fessler. And he throws bubble screen and in and out of the hands of his intended receiver. Looks like uh, Jake DeHart, number two. Yeah, Jake DeHart comes in on the year with 10 catches, 188 yards, and a touchdown. Fessler... 55 of 109, Mark, 1,058 uh, yards. He's got 10 touchdowns, 4 interceptions. Clock runs. If you just joined us, 7 nothing. prep in front. 7.43 to go here in quarter number one on a beautiful night at Erie, Pennsylvania. Three receivers right. They hand the ball off. Uh, look at that so they're speed. running oh. back. That's the hard again. Great run inside the 20. What a great a block by joint. No. Oh. Uh, Rod Payne is down and oh, oh, out yeah, here Payne's on the 45-yard line writhing in pain. But there's a big block on Cordell Owens by joint, the receiver, a little comeback block that sprung the, sprung the running back. He had to hurt. Who's the leading uh, receiver or runner for them? Yep, they did in the early early stats in our yeah. pr- in our production meeting this morning. Yes, uh, DeHart with forty seven carries, Mark, on the air for three hundred and eighty two yards. He's averaging seventy six yards a game and eight touchdowns on the ground. So it looks like Celia's tending to Rod Payne, and yep. she's working on a lower body issue here, maybe a leg. Well, one of the things we talked with Dennis earlier in the week was you know the hopes to come in here and get out of here without any substantial injuries maybe she's pulling on his uh toe maybe cramping it could be could be a little bit awful, awful early for that yep so what are you gonna have for the announcers for uh the awareness uh day on the 26th i'll be in florida so i'll wear uh, you know pink bikini underwear or bathing suit if you want there you go if you guys can make a special one up for me perhaps yeah really <laughs> per- perhaps I'll, uh, usually perhaps. We, usually we do all the fill stuff later but you know, being that we're exhausted from a three-hour, 80-mile trip. I felt like Gilligan on that ride down the 90. <laughs> uh, I'd perhaps go with a more conventional, pay, perhaps, pink polo. Oh, there you go. Very yeah. nice. So. <laughs> but a pink suit would be nice. It doesn't have to be bikini. It could be boxer. You know what? Maybe Boxer-type suit. No, you know With a little what? SJ on it. Maybe I'll, like call pajamas. Up, uh, I'll call up my buddy with the tux joint and uh, get a pink tuxedo. Oh, there you go. Ooh, how cool would that be? That would be pretty outstanding. They make tuxedos in pink? Yeah, you know, you go back to the 70s and stuff. So, Rod Payne still being attended to by Celia down on the field. So we're going to take a timeout? No, we can't do that, huh? No. We don't have any advertisers? We do. We, we Sports night, we can get right to that. Uh, Whenever that is. Next, next Friday. Friday night. That's where wow, we'll be next Friday. You're absolutely out of sorts, and you were just the passenger. <laughs> Jeez. There's a lot of work checking the GPS all the way in here and not knowing where you're going. So Payne is up. And gingerly coming Very, to the yep, sideline. You wouldn't think. It looks like peak. his left leg. Yep. 
Oh, boy. Well, hopefully nothing dangerous serious there. Well, he can be yeah. ill afford to be out for this Marauder squad. He is one of the stalwarts on this team, offensively, defensively for sure, in the middle of that defense. Yep. But a week from the night, sports night at St. Joe's. I believe doors open at 6 o'clock, $25.00. Admission ticket, a lot of the local restaurants will be there uh, donating their food. A lot of fantastic auction items, raffles. All the funds go to the athletic programs. So we got the first down for prep. They hand the ball off, it looks like, to DeHart again. And he's going to get maybe three to the St. Joe 16-yard line. So if you want tickets, you can come in that night and get them or... uh, Check with the school in advance this week. Should be a great night. Great job by Deep Pasquale there on the tackle as he was able to corral the running back, but not before a two, maybe three yard game, we'll call it. You know, remember, we got a little shot clock down here in Pennsylvania, too. You got 25 seconds to get the playoff. Right. And if the game gets, what, 35 points, yep. the clock continues to run. Fessler's going to throw a slant pattern just in front of his intended receiver. It was Norfolk at number one. Who's got two touchdowns on the year, 15 catches. He was wide open, just a little bit in front of him. Marauders, again, a little shorthanded this week. I think Justin Jones is out. Yep. Joshua Jackson, Jenny Gregory. Yep. And, of course, quarterback Mike McCarthy as well. Up, Josh Jackson back in this evening. Late addition to the roster. We didn't get that. So it's third down now. Shotgun for Fessler. Rolls out to his left. Left Left-hander throws back to the right side. He's got his receiver. Finds a little blocking. Cuts up the middle inside the St. Joe five-yard line. First down. It's number nine. The brother, I'm assuming, of Billy Fessler. That's Charles Fessler. The junior, 6'4", 186 pounds out of Erie, Pennsylvania. You know, you wonder, Mark, if the Marauders get down here with another score and with Rod Payne being on the sideline, if Coach Gilbert might think about going back to Tyler Hill to try and throw the ball a little bit. Well, if they fall behind, yeah, you're going to may have to change the plan to, to the circumstances. So first and goal at the 5, 6.20 to go. First quarter prep in front, 7 nothing, threatening to score again. Three receivers to the left. He gives the ball to his tailback. That's number 23, Shaquan Thrower. 5'11", senior, 241 pounds. Well, he's a big boy lining up in that backfield. So he gets a gain of one second down on the four. Well, this is the first time I've had the actual feed on the iPad here. Yeah, it's working. Everything's no gremlins tonight so far. We used all the gremlins up on the way here. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so I called ahead for a special table at the Presque Isle Casino for the way back. <laughs> Yeah, we got a timeout called by St. Joe's. Oh, hey, big night Thursday night, though, for the inaugural volleyball cast right here on this uh, network. We can call ourselves a network. Yeah, we're a broadcast network, pal. So 6.30, Canisius will be in town, and the Marauders will try to avenge the loss of about a week and a half ago at Canisius. Should be a great night. It'll be our first uh, volleyball broadcast. Excited about that. Well, it'll be a good a good night to kind of regroup. It's been a tough week for the uh, volleyballers as they went down to uh, Orchard Park and got beaten, of course, all across town to St. Mary's. So they're going to be looking to get that edge back as they head into the playoffs. And we want to wish a great congratulations to Coach Jack Herlin, whose team uh, tied for first in the league in golf this year, and that's his third divisional title in four years. So they'll be heading to Orchard Park Country Club on Monday for the All-Catholics. And uh, Well, we're having a little technical difficulty with our video. We'll get that fixed up. I don't know. It looked pretty good to me. Yeah, Except everything was going good. Now we'll, uh, yep, you get, still got the audio, though. Lucky you. <laughs> <laughs> and they run the ball right side. It's to Hart, and he fouls his blockers into the end zone. Another touchdown for Cathedral Prep, and they're in front now 13 nothing. 5.28 to go here in quarter number one. 
Oh, get something back. There we, there we go. go. Hit that focus button, young man. There we go. Got the prep band right down in front of us and a great crowd here. I'd say, you know, 3,000 plus here. They've got the bank seating on the other side, just oh, like yeah. uh, Major League Baseball. No, that's great. Where, uh, they, had a, they got a yeah. little, uh, a little um, VIP section behind. This is a just fantastic facility. It is. Little prep band out here in front of us. They got seven of the percussion uh, percussion guys from the prep band. Nice to see. I love seeing that at the football yeah. games. So what do you do, Coach? How do they regroup here down 14 nothing, playing the number one team in uh, Pennsylvania? Well, you got to – obviously, you have to find a way to sustain a drive here. You've got to keep the ball out of their hands. You've got to put a drive together where you can just – whether it's momentum or take some time off or just get a good feeling going. You need a couple of first downs. Of course, you're going to be without Rod Payne offensively. They're still working on him on the sideline, Mark. So shorthanded as they are, they're even more shorthanded now with Payne yeah. on the sideline. Well, you know what? Hey, hey, this game is its nice that they're here, but it doesn't mean a thing. you got to be healthy for the stretch run, and if you, he needs the rest of the night off, give it to him. Right, you're coming yep. in. you got no uh, question about St. that. St. Mary's next Saturday, and the following Saturday, timing comes calling, and then, then uh, the big one. Then the big one. So I'll prep to kick it away here. Number 30, that's Michael Spizami, the kicker and punter, junior, 5'11", 211 pounds. He's out of Erie, Pennsylvania, as most of the players are. And <laughs> kick to Miles Young, takes it at the 5, finds a little room right side, and he's brought down at the 26 or 27-yard line. That'll be first down there from the Marauders. We'll see what uh, substitution pattern we see now. Folks, we're working on the video aspect for you. Yep, here. we'll we have should... it back. It's just a matter of a couple of seconds. Yep. Can I have, a, can I have our roster? There you go, buddy. It's on the back. <laughs> I got it. It's on the back of what? The back of my pad here. So we'll see he's in the uh, backfield. little train in the uh, offing here, too. So the backfield now will be Con Shafter, Miles Young and Cordell Owens along with Davis in this diamond formation, double tight ends. They hand the ball off to Young and nothing there. Yeah, good penetration. Still on moving the- though. Look at this guy. Good run. Well, I can't I, believe they didn't, they didn't I'm surprised the they didn't blow it dead when I said it should be dead. Well, good penetration uh, from the right defensive side of a cathedral prep, but they just couldn't take Young down to the ground. Yep. So a good gain of about five on that one. Well, you, know, you know, you look at the size of the lines, too. I mean, they were physically overmatched, uh, you know, up front. Numerically. And numerically, yes. But look at the side. We'll try yep. to identify some of the linemen here for prep and give you a sense of their, their heights and weights. And we've got a, a Kono substitution penalty here. St. Joe's comes in late from the sideline, so that'll be five-yard penalty. It'll make it third and ten. I don't understand why that would be a penalty. I think he ran in late from the sideline after they broke the huddle. I, yeah, but I, that doesn't matter. I, they didn't obviously have. Obviously, it does. They only had ten nope. on the field. They oh, waved you're right. The flag okay, off. Yep, they waved it up. You, you were on your game tonight. Yep, I had a lot of time to think for that nine-hour ride we took from Buffalo. <laughs> By the way, we got to blame. Could have went to scenic route. We could route five. We'd have been here no problem. Well, we got to put the blame on the guy who told us nah, the wrong directions. Absolutely. Two right, two left for the Marauders in the shotgun. Davis is going to throw and intended for Miles Young, incomplete. Number thirty-five, the unidentified player who is now Shaquan Carson. He's now been identified. There you go. Not a lot of guys. Cornerback, he hails from Erie, Pennsylvania. Yep. Or he could be from Fairview, which I believe we just left. <laughs> we left the a home lot of, of Lakeshore Country Club. Looked uh, like a beautiful it, it, club. Yeah, we might, we might have, have to get, come up here and play. Yeah, absolutely. So it's third down and five at the 33, 429 here in quarter one. Prep in front early, 14 nothing. Young shotgun. He's going to throw. He's got some pressure. Throws over the middle, and it is, oh, almost. Got a flag here. Yeah, flag coming in from the left side. Miles Young, the intended receiver. 
The flag flag was thrown in the direction of the two flags, buddy. We got one two yep. by the quarterback. Okay, DeHart and Tyler Hill. We'll see if they might have been a defensive hold. And you but, might have an offensive hold. Yeah, you got one at the Could line be of right at the line. Oh, chop block. block by the Marauders. And ineligible. Oh, ineligible yep. downfield by the Marauders. So we're 0 for 2. No, no casino stops on the way back. Well, you know, it probably happened here with Tyler Hill, and he was where the flag was thrown. He probably was covered by an offensive or by a receiver, which makes him ineligible by formation. That receiver has to be off the line so that tight end can release downfield. So third down. No, penalties are be declined. It will now be fourth down. They'll have to kick it away here. Perhaps. I, I you got to kick it away. I mean, well, do you? <laughs> yeah, they're gonna. You're not gonna give it to him on the 37. At least not now. But maybe you would. Well, we'll see if we can get one off here. Number 21 back for. Prep, Marlon Tyree, 6'2", 180-pound senior. Where's he from? I think he's from Erie, Pennsylvania. You got it. You're, you're a winner. Yep. Ooh, oh, no. You could pick that one away in a he horrific hit it about five punt. yards. Yep. It bounces off of You know, they're going to probably have to mark that back That's at the 44. It well, doesn't I guess. look that way. They're going to give it to Prep. They'll start inside their own... Uh, it did around the 49 in their own territory. We'll call it an 18-yard punt. Well, the Marauders have to find a way to get a stop here, or they're in the serious danger zone here, Mark, because they haven't shown much offensively. And you got to, if nothing else, you got to find a way to get this team to punt the ball away to you, or maybe even get a turnover. Would that but be the Kenny Loggins danger zone? Could be. All right. <laughs> They got a lot of receivers. Two left, two right. Fessler's going to throw. He locks long down the right side, and his brother had it and couldn't haul it in. Incomplete. Conch after on the coverage. Second down. Yeah, Charlie Fessler, the junior, 6'4", big size big boy. advantage, and they just threw it up to him out there. Well, as I said before you got here, I'm sure they've looked at some Marauder film from the last two games and recognize there's some... That's a spot to attack. Yep. Especially if you're 6'4". Conchie after his point, probably about 5'10", 5'11". Buster's going to throw. Oh! Good hit out there there by by Conchie after. Yep, DeHart, the uh, intended receiver on the flare pass. Tried to throw a little screen, and uh, re- well read by the Marauders. That time they got a little pressure. So third down now. Maybe the Marauders can get a get a stop here, get them to punt it away. Four minutes still to go here in quarter one. 14 nothing. Joint checks into the lineup, and he'll replace Malone out on the at the receiver spot. We're here at Dallinger Field, the home of the Ramblers. Renewed the basketball rivalry a little bit. This Cathedral Prep this year, freshman and JV home and home series. That's terrific. Coach Hurlin very happy about those that trip to Erie, Pennsylvania, <laughs> on we'll, a Sunday. <laughs> we'll give him. Some no, direction. actually, it's a Saturday morning. But got to delay a game here on Cathedral Prep. <laughs> well, we uh, we have our home and home with the baseball team. Coach Dave Hess will be bringing his team up for the I ninety Classic, which will feature. McQuaid and Clarence as well on May 10th, and we'll be heading down for a doubleheader with Cathedral Prep and Erie McDowell earlier in the April. But they're not allowed to take the route we take because then it would be the I-79-90 classic. That's correct. So hopefully they just get right on 90. True. So third and a bunch here, third and 15. Fessler's in the shotgun. A little pressure from Cordell Owens up the middle. Fessler throws oh. wide open. Oh, Dropped by his brother. Brother again. Couldn't haul it in. So it'll be fourth down. The Marauders hold him. And the week fourth down coming up. The Ramblers will kick it away from their own 44-yard line. He keeps dropping balls like that. Mom and Dad might only make one peanut butter and jelly sandwich (laughs) after the game. (laughs) So Young will go back with Conch after. And we'll see who the punter is here. I believe it'll be Michael Spazami. You want... uh, 
mustard on that? I'm hoping I get the name right. <laughs> could be, could be, yeah, spiz of me. Well, a good, a good ask. break, a good stop for the Marauders. Start to build on that, perhaps here. Good punt. Conshafter takes it at the 18. Fair catches it there, and that's where the Marauders will start. Late flag comes flying in here, thrown at the 32 yard line. I have no idea what that could be. Well, it's a 38 yard punt unofficially. We'll see what the call is here. And they're looking to the Marauder sideline to see if they want to take the penalty. So I'm guessing it could be against Cathedral Prep here. I There's can't. nobody stand around. I don't even know. I, I'd open your window, buddy, but I, I don't think it opens. No, no, I'm just checking the spiders climb yeah. up the rail there. Yeah. So let's see what the flag is. Waiting for the official signal. Blocking Block the back. in the back against St. Joe's. Not exactly sure. There was nobody there. Yeah, that was either the ref couldn't get the flag yeah, out of his yeah, pocket yeah, for a while or, or whatever. Or he wasn't happy that the punt didn't go inside the 10. Well, I did get a chance to get directions up to the press box from uh, Athletic Director Bill Flanagan's wife. Oh, She's a very nice lady. I thanked her. But this is uh, the this Hall is of a Fame nice inductions setup. tonight. They've got the picnic tables and the tent down to the... To our right, was it? Is that a halftime event? No, I think they're done with. I think okay. the. I think it was pregame. Okay. So I think we're just here going to do a little football, just the way we like it. Now, interestingly, even though the penalty was whistled against the Marauders, the ball was moved ahead to the twenty-nine yard line. So, I'm yeah. What's that? It was on Cathedral. Okay. Well, all right, now I'm feeling a lot better about this whole trip. <laughs> First down. In the uh, triangle, Davis keeps it, finds a nice hole over the right tackle, and he brings it out over the 40-yard gain of 10 or 11. First down, Marauders. I well, believe our first down of the uh, afternoon, second one. Well, we may not have been here for the first one, or at least <laughs> me. I can't imagine you found a parking spot. I'm telling you. Nice. Where do you see it? You're going to be laughing when you see it. Because we're, all we're going to do is turn left and get out on the road. Beautiful. Are we going out the back entrance here? Not uh, the one where I came in. I have no idea. How Which to get entrance out of did here. you come in? Well, I, I, over here? Yeah, no, over there through that tunnel thing. Oh, they, oh we're at the But we will thing. go out the other exit. All right. I believe. Well, we've got a little of the referee down to the corner here. They get it ready for action here. First down at the 40-yard line. They pitch the ball to Miles Young, Ooh. and he's you met hard in the backfield. Stood up right there at the 39-yard line. A good play by Cathedral Prep. I think that might have been uh, Jacob Gala, number 18. That's exactly who it was, coming off the corner. 5'11", junior, out of Erie, Pennsylvania. Sure. A lot of spiders on my window here, buddy. <laughs> This guy's pretty it's active. our third though. night broadcast of the season. Yeah. Well, we get better. We get more per diem when we do night games. Yep. Yep. Get that second shift differential. <laughs> so second and 12 at the 38. Tough to Young audibleize the with the train. Back behind him. And they give the ball to Miles Young. Finds a room off the left guard out to the 34-yard line, 44-yard line. Gain of about five. It'll bring up third down. Clock runs 233 here in quarter number one. 14 nothing. the Ramblers of Cathedral Prep. Yeah, I wonder Pennsylvania's if, number one ranked team. I wonder if that train is set up strategically because it's only running when the Marauders are on offense. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep, I can see it. It stopped up right over there, and it's going to come back. <laughs> Maybe it's just a tram, like at those at the airport and well, those uh, little Disney. things you used to have around your Christmas tree. You know, they go back and forth. Back Marauders and have forth. to hurry. Just five on the on the uh, game clock or the play clock, yep, and they're going to use a timeout time here. Yep, timeout number two of the night taken here in the first quarter. But uh, it's a big play, third and I seven. I like the way they speed it up here. Everybody gets to the Friday night fish fry quicker. <laughs> it smells like they got some fried dough going here tonight. 
Well, I'm excited for Thursday. The volleyball should be pretty cool. Oh, I would think so. And before the volleyball match, even though it will not be uh, on air, the soccer team hosts Canisius as well, Ugh. I believe, at 430. That could be a little dicey out in the rain. They're calling for some rain. Yeah. That, the soccer game will not be uh, broadcast live. It won't be broadcast tape either. And that will be part of uh, Pinktober. Yep. As the St. Joe Student Council will be working both uh, concession stands and selling some pink items to wear for the students and the parents, I suppose. Well, obviously the band, they don't want to play any songs. They just want to flip the drumsticks back and forth to each other. Interesting. Yeah. All right, we're ready to go here. Third down and six. Marauders need to keep this drive alive at their own 44. Young the lone back. Conchafter comes in motion. Yeah. Low snap. This has got nothing but trouble written on it. And Davis goes down at the 41. They're going to lose three there. That was the linebacker number 52. Devon Barnes, 6'3", 272. That's a big boy. I don't know what they're feeding him down here in Pennsylvania, but we got to get some of it. Saw an El Canelo, maybe some Mexican. It smells like we're at the fair. Yeah. The county fair. Davis into punt. Punt number three. He's had one blocked. Flag comes in. It's a low line drive. It's taken at the 30-yard line. Out to midfield. Great move there. Up the sideline. Still on his feet. Cuts back. And out of bounds inside the St. Joe 35-yard line. It's Marlon, Marlon Tyree. Poor tackling there for the Marauders. There's a flag down on the near sideline. There was line. a flag as soon as it was kicked. Yeah. So I don't know if it could have been an offsides on prep. Oh, maybe not. going to be a formation penalty in either us or offsides. I don't know. Formation. There you go. Legal formation on the... Legal procedure. No, nah, it's be formation. Same signal. Right? No. Yeah. Yes, it is. No. The illegal shift. No, oh, snap, but formation. Like six guys on the line instead of seven. Sure, perhaps. I'm okay. up on my... Uh, yes, you are. My referee uh, signals. I got to tell you, I got to get re-energized after that ride. <laughs> well, it's down might track. be only way to, one way to get re-energized, yeah. and that's <laughs> about three hours, <laughs> three and a half hours from now. <laughs> First down, Fessler gives it to uh, DeHart. Oh, no, Fessler keeps it himself. Good, good read. Good read option there, and he takes it down to the St. Joe's 26-yard line. Inside Big gain a, there. Yeah, inside of a minute, but that's a great read. That's the read option at its finest. The quarterback, his read on that is absolutely the DN. Connor McKenna came up field to the running back, and Fessler kept it, went up the middle, and got nine yards on the carry. So, second and two. The play clock the, uh, is not running now. They get it started here. Fessler, the left-hander, throws deep in the end zone. Oh, just overthrows his intended receiver. Oh, that's a good throw, though. That's a good throw over the shoulder. Only only guy who could get it was the receiver. And that was number seven, I believe. Is it? Yeah. A little tough with the black and orange here to get those, get numbers. those numbers. A lot of glare. Number three, I believe. Excuse me, thank you. Oh, no, it can't be three. That's the quarterback. Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's an eight. <laughs> I don't know. It's eight. It is a number eight, but Yeah, Greenwald. There Wait, you go. Believe me, we've done this before, folks. <laughs> Ten seconds left. So in third the down, play. hands the ball to DeHart, Oof. finds a big hole over the left side, Boy, does and he, run he runs hard in. He's quick, and he brings it inside to St. Joe, 15, down to around the 12-yard line. So first down, it should probably run out the quarter here as soon as they set it for play. They wind that clock, and they do. We'll see if Prep tries to run another play here. Uh, with them huddling up here, I don't know that they'll get it off in time. Just six seconds left. 
But I think they would want to run it if they can. Keep the Marauders on their heels. Two seconds, and they do get it off. It's a handoff to, to Hart again, and he brings it down to the nine-yard line. Tackled there by Josh Jackson, Josh Jackson number yep. 15. And that's going to do it for quarter number one. It's been all Ramblers. They started off on a turnover from Nigel Davis. Go up 7-0 on the play after a fumble. Then they get good field advantage on a bad punt. Go 14-0. And that's where we stand. As you can see, there it is. Got our integrity first quarter statistics. The Marauders 33 yards of offense on the ground. No zero passing, two first downs. Prep 51 yards on the ground, 16 passing. Total is 67, three first downs. But two touchdowns. But they got what matters, and it's number it's 14. Pumping in a little in-game music yeah. here, too. Whoa, hey, what happened to... I'm not sure. Sorry, boss, we gotta, I got to see what happened. Oh, we lost our... Well, folks, we've got we a new videographer again. tonight. We're just working through some glitches. But well, we're still here, folks. We're just uh, hey, they're passing around money in the box right. next to us. Are you? There we go. We got it back. Be back in a second. So the team's just coming out here to start quarter number two. Hey, Sports Hall of Fame night will be on uh, Friday, November fifteenth. It'll be a great night. Yeah, two thousand and four hockey team. Bob O'Connor, Bob O'Connor, Mark Campanella, coach football. of the football Marauders, yeah. Tommy Buckley, Mike Rosborski, and Coach Keener. Coach Keener from the wrestling program. So here we go, second and eight. We'll Tough. start the uh, quarter number two. Ramblers in front. Fessler throws corner of the end zone. He's got his man. Easy six touchdown. Number eleven. Manish Felix Manischel. Fourth touchdown of the year for Shell. Miles Young on the coverage. And it's now 20 nothing. Too easy there. Just a little fade pattern. Oh, yeah. You know, six-foot Shell. Try for point is low, but it looks like it's good. And it is. It is. What a nice facility here. It is really absolutely is. spectacular. Absolutely spectacular. This is big time high school football, my friend. Yes, gonna, it is. You get over that border, it totally changes. Full house. It starts right with the guys in front of us. The drummers, yeah. they make it happen. Changes the entire atmosphere of the game right out of the gate. They got the seven-man drum crew here. They've got about 40 cheerleaders. They've got about 80 guys on the roster. And if I missed anything, I'm sorry. <laughs> they got the live radio. Yeah, on uh, 1210 Erie, I believe, is the Do they have the, the live numbers. video, though? No, they don't. Yeah, we are one step go. ahead of them. Well, the Marauders will have to look to get one step ahead of their defense right here with this drive. So they and find themselves down 21 nothing, just six seconds into the second quarter. And do they broadcast volleyball? No. <laughs> I'll tell you, that anybody who's listening, you've got to watch the volleyball match. You will not be disappointed. It will be one of the best. If you can't go there and be there in person. Taken by Davis at the 10, trying to find a hole. Tries to bounce it outside. No can do. Brought down at the 27-yard line. Well, this this shows you a little bit, Mark. You know, we've seen Nigel Davis have such a great start to the season. And you're facing a fuller team here in this Cathedral Prep roster. And he's having trouble getting himself going. It, it's all about depth in this sport. Yep, and if you just join us, Rod Payne 
injured early. I'm sure he's done for the day. So they're really doing it with, you know. Well, they do have a spike in shoe off, and he's taped and iced up on the sideline. He's directly across from us here. But he's not coming back. He, there's no reason to bring him back. No, no. 21 nothing, 11.46 to go here in quarter two. Tyler Hill now in the backfield for the Marauders. Yep. We're still in the. Uh, Good block by Hill, yep. too. And it, Davis takes it himself out to the 31 yard line, gain of four. But as I was saying, you know, the volleyball, if you can't go, if, you sh- if you're listening and you you love St. Joe's Canisius events, this is a great rivalry event. High, high energy. Top five volleyball teams in western New York. They both can play. Yeah, it will be, it's, every match they play is always high energy. This will be as high energy. So if you can't make it, watch. We'll have great coverage for you. So Davis keeps it on second down, trying to file his blockers left side, gets up the sideline, burst of speed, and let's see where he went out of bounds. I'm looking through your spiders on the window about here, the and at the 37-yard line, it's going to be very close to the first down. I think he's got enough. Uh, let's see here. Yes, sir. They do, and they moved the football. They had it, they had to be a first right. down. Yeah, once they picked it up, so it is a first down for Davis. That would be the third for the Marauders in the game. And the Marauders break the huddle. you got Tyler Hill to the right. You've got Conshafter in the eye. And it looks like Cordell Owens on the left side. Here comes a blitz. And they give it to Conshafter trying to find room up the gut. Gain a one. A well run, a well run, run blitz there for the prep uh, defense as they brought two linebackers into the B gaps essentially bringing six on the play and filling each gap and holding the carry to one yard well they're gonna it's gonna be hard for them to get yards up the gut here I gotta think they gotta try to find the edges and hope they can spring somebody most notably Nigel I get you we've talked about some of the linemen here if you're looking at him on your screen, 52 Barnes, 272 pounds. He's at the uh, left nose tackle position. Davis keeps it, trying to find something right edge. Nothing there. Back to the line of scrimmage, maybe a gain of one. So it'll bring up third down. Very good team speed for Cathedral Prep as well. Yep. Well, Mark just Number 57, James Trusilla, the linebacker, 6'1", 256. Number, of, uh, let's get some of these other numbers for you. Number 43, Jacob Murawski, a six footer. A lot of time in the weight room. Oh, yeah. You know? So, third and nine at the 38, 9 30 goes second quarter. Rodgers trying to get something going here. Davis is going to throw under pressure, nowhere to go, and he's brought down. Be another big loss. That's number 52 again. Devon Barnes, the 6'3 senior, 272-pounder. And the Marauders will have to kick it away as they lose six there. It'll be at their own 32-yard line. Yeah, the Marauders are going to have to... Find some answers here offensively. Try and stay in this ball game. Davis is back to punt. Conchafter and Masters are the pointers. And that's uh, Tyree back again. He's had a couple of good runs already. Davis's punt's going to bounce out of bounds. It's somewhere around the 37-yard line. So that's going to be a 31-yard punt. Yep, 38's where they're going to spot it, and... The Rambros will take over at their own 38. Well, Mark, Sunday afternoon we've got the uh, 7th and 8th grade fall hitting camp. If you haven't sent in your form, folks, no worries. Come on up, and uh, even if you don't have a form, we'll have some forms out there for you to fill out. $35 for the day. We'll be doing video analysis with the boys, so it should be a beautiful day weather-wise. Yes, it will. 2 o'clock will be the start for that. And you can see the... uh Big lacrosse game at the same time. Yeah. <laughs> Fessler rolls out to his left. 
Looks, throws, and over the head of his intended receiver, DeHart, is uh, the Canisius College lacrosse team host an exhibition game, uh, Team Canada. If I got that correct? Yep. So far, so good. You can call the Canadian lacrosse national office for tickets. <laughs> <laughs> or the consulate. True. Well, now you can't call them anymore. They're out of town. Who, the Canadian consulate? Yeah. Where are they? I don't know. They left the HSBC building. Oh, they did closed they? closed up. I, don't know. I didn't me? even know they had one. Oh, for HSBC. God's sakes. I just, I just make it up as I go along. <laughs> Read the paper. Second down. <laughs> Ten. Got three receivers stacked to the left here. Bessler throws up the right sideline. Oh. Good coverage there by Nigel Davis. Tended for Charlie Fessler. So third down, 8.22 to go here in the half. 21-0, it's been all prep up to this point. Well, prep coming in off of a state title last year, picking up right where they left off, 6-0 and overall, 2-0 and in their conference, and at number one in Division 3A here in Pennsylvania. And that's doing something. That's a pretty good level of football down here. Yep. I love the receive the size of their two receivers. Yeah, that's here. good. Two, Six four. Two that's boys. Fessler throws, and he's got his man, and he's brought down at the forty six. Oh, oh the late flag comes in here. Late. It's going to be yeah. They're going to get a late, late hit. hit on Nigel Davis. Tough call yeah, there, yeah, boy. Because he was he was brought down by John Schmidt. Not sure about that, my friend. Yeah, tough call uh, there, yeah. but it's going to be I'll a be first down fifteen now. yard walk off. And it will be enough for a Rambler first down. Yeah, he wasn't down to the ground yet at this point, watching the replay. But he may have led with the helmet. As I look at the replay, he may led may have led with the helmet. Okay. So Miles Young, we report from the sideline, he'll be out for the rest of the evening with a concussion. So the Marauders Corps getting thin offensively here, pal. Yep. This is not the... Time of the season, not that there is any good time, but you've got to, uh, you know, the numbers are thin to begin with. Hopefully they'll get a few back after this week. Hopefully Justin Jones will be back. Um, McCarthy still may be another week or so. Yeah. Well, Celia's got her work cut out for her. <laughs> she does. Well, the penalty walks it off to the 39-yard line of Cathedral Prep. <laughs> so first and 10 at the Marauder 39. Fessler have one back in the backfield. He's got two left, two right. Fakes the handoff, going to throw under pressure. He's hit by Cordell Owens, and oh, in the hands of Okono. And he's not able to bring it down. That's a play good, you got to make there. Good rush up the middle by Cordell Owens to, fo- yeah, to finish. And, yeah, Conal's got to catch that one. No reason not to. So second and ten. Well, a lot of pressure on, on Connor McKenna and Cordell Owens to get pressure on Fessler here, not let him get comfortable in the box because he can spin it back there. Good left-handed arm. And he's got some big targets, as we mentioned earlier. Preps have been the uh, lucky recipient of short fields here all night. So second and ten. Fessler looks right to his left. Slant pattern, and he's got his man. That's number eight, Alex Greenwall, six foot four, wide receiver. So they're running two receivers, both at six four. Well, Greenwald has averaged 43 yards a game, 17 yards per catch. Right. And he's got three touchdowns on the year. Fessler throws over 200, and his average throw is about 20 yards, if I remember right. Well, he threw for 438 last week, a school record. So So he's going to throw it again. Looks to his left. Going to throw deep the end zone for his brother, and he's got it. Touchdown. Great recognition of the mismatch. His linebacker, John Schmidt, was in coverage. And they found the weak link, and a great ball delivered. Fessler to Fessler for touchdown number four for Cathedral Prep. And that makes it 27 0 with 7.36 to go here in the second quarter.
Maybe they're not allowed to play unless they score. Yeah. <laughs> I remember years ago when we played down here, they used to have a cannon that would go off when they scored a touchdown back when I was playing. Thank God they did away with that tradition because that was awful loud if you were on the sideline. The extra point is up and good. Bednarowitz in for the extra point. The 5'10 junior, they got him listed as 116 pounds. <laughs> 116? That's what it says here. I don't make this stuff up. 116. Got to be a typo. Yeah, he doesn't. He doesn't. He's, nah, he didn't look well, he's well over 125. Maybe it's 1,116. <laughs> The Rambler band it goes on. I'll tell you what else goes on. This spider in front of me is doing some kind of job spinning his web. <laughs> so we got Marauder baseball for our young kids on Sunday. Marauder basketball on Monday, nine to twelve, open to the public. I'll be there to greet everybody. Yeah, I went out and threw a uh, batting practice session last night just to get loose for Sunday. Figuring I'll have to throw about four or five hundred pitches. There you go. So do we have a machine that does it? Nah. It's Coach Desk. <laughs> I am the machine, brother. Yeah, you are the machine. Plus, i got to work on my slider. None of those eighth graders will be able to hit it. Next Saturday afternoon, we'll be out at uh, St. Mary's. One o'clock start, I believe. One. We'll go calling on the Lancers. Lancers without their top guy, though. It's going to be a struggle. Yeah, Nick Vallone. Without Nick Vallone. Broke his thumb in practice on a yeah. Tuesday practice. Yeah, too bad. And here's the kick taken by Cordell Owens. Takes it right side, tries to break it back left, and he's brought down just over the 25-yard line. Mark, this is where you see, and this is why depth is so important in yeah. football. You know, I know we're, we're still only halfway through the second quarter, but you see some attrition with injury, and you see some wearing down because you've got so many guys going both ways. For Cathedral Prep, two guys going both ways. And that's, right. and that's a big – we saw that with St. Anthony's earlier in the year, and that is a big deal, especially when you've got your big boys up front who have to go both ways, and you're on the field all day long. It's, it's a tough task. So first down, Tyler Hill is now at quarterback. He'll be under center. Con Shafter and Nigel Davis in the eye. And he gives the ball to Davis, finds room left side. Good cutback. He's at 40 and out to the 47-yard line. Big run there, close to 20 yards for Nigel. Great, great move as he broke through. It's just a little power left by the Marauders. He made the first man miss. Threw a juke on the linebacker, was able to get into the third level of the Ramblers' defense, and he's out almost near midfield for a Marauder first down. I would imagine this would be the kind of formation we see here the rest of the evening. Yeah, you Nigel know, and the running back. And, and you hate to say it too, but you got to protect yourself a little bit too here from some more injuries. No, I agree. Yeah, this you is. know, I, unfortunately, you have to coach that way when you have these types of numbers. They're still going to go at it, but it's going to be a more, you know, parochial type of offense. I yep. would imagine. You're right. So I formation again. Ah, oh, we had movement down the McKenna right side. Jumped. I don't think he'll get the benefit of of the of the prep defender putting his hand up. Nah, sometimes you can get that call as the you know, protecting yourself, but uh, that was too far away from McKenna. Yeah, Michael Meyer in at wide receiver out. He was out to the right here. Not the Michael Meyer from uh, Halloween. We got that straightened away a we couple did, weeks yes. ago. It took a long time since I had the wrong movie. Well. Yeah, Friday the 13th, Halloween. They're all the they're same. All the same. Except for Saw, the Saw series we saw. Oh, we love Saw. <laughs> but that's we'll, we'll do our movie critiquing in the third quarter. <laughs> so first and 15, clock runs 630. Hill gives it to Davis. Trying to find something, but nothing there. Is the Rambler line... Clogs it up. Yeah, Castellani and the boys having a little trouble with the middle of this defensive line for Cathedral Prep. Big size and good speed, good penetration, good sideline to sideline speed in their linebackers. So these big guys up front, all they're going to do is hold up and clog those lanes and let these linebackers run around. They've shown great speed here tonight. I formation again, Conchafter and Davis. Meyer. 
to your right. Acona left. Hill's going to throw, and it is almost intercepted. Was intended for McKenna, but the safety number 35, Shaquan Carson, read that one all the way. Yeah, that's a good yeah. jump of that route. Oh, yeah. Because that was a very good ball delivered by Hill. It just Carson made a better jump and a better read. A little bit of that problem there. McKenna bellies that veer pass out a little bit, and believe it or not, that step or two bellying it out wider, it really throws the timing of that playoff. He's got to get upfield and not veer off to the side a little bit like he did there. So it's third down at 14. Hill's going to throw again under pressure. Screen pass left side for Davis incomplete. And it'll bring up fourth down. Clock stops at 543. What is the clock running rule? 35, I believe? I believe so. Just the magic number here in Pennsylvania? At 35, it just yeah, keeps just, going. Just so you know, folks, they do have a rule here to avoid some of those lopsided scores that we sometimes see back home is if one team does get up by 35, it's a lot like hockey when you get up by 7 or so. They just run the clock throughout. Oh, boy. Well, high snap. Davis pulls it down. Another I think you got a piece of that one pun. again. I don't know, but it's going to take a bounce and go out of bounds at the prep 37-yard line, so 17-7, 24-yard kick. It almost looked like the heart got a little piece of that, the way it came off the foot. So 5.33 left here in the first half, and the Marauders kind of hanging on here. Trying to keep this thing down where they might be able to get into the halftime and make some adjustments. What adjustments would you make, Coach, at halftime? I would turn this in to a track meet. I'd get shotgun, three wides, and just throw it deep and see what could happen. Really? Nah, not really. <laughs> Try and methodically get down the field with your yep. with your horse. Oh, good play there. They hand the Look ball up. off to and get that to Hart, number two. John Schmidt drags him down, but not before a 15-yard gain. Great little draw play. Yep. And that, that was just textbook the, with their execution up front. They turned they turned the guys loose to the outside, and that middle was wide open. So now they're going to empty the backfield. He's got three receivers right, two left. I'm guessing he's going to throw. And he is over the middle. And, oh, almost intercepted by Jackson, but it's caught for a... Rambler, touchdown, 47 yards. What could have been a pick ended up being six for prep. But the Marauders are really going to have to work in these coming weeks with the defensive backfield. Looks like number 25. Was it D'Angelo Malone? Yes, sir. And it's now 34-0 the Ramblers. As I'm looking at the replay, what's happening is the defensive backs are keeping their eyes in the backfield and not continuing to get depth. And when that happens and a guy's running by, as they say, if he's even, he's leaving. Kick is up, and it is good. And we've hit the magic number of 35, if it's still magic. Yes, sir. Beautiful night here in Erie, Pennsylvania, though. Great night for football. Yeah, it is beautiful. What a fall. What an early autumn we've had, too. Beautiful fall. Yeah, we had our, first, right our worst weather game was in week one and two, <laughs> actually. Yeah. The last four weeks That's have right. been we great. Had the, we had those couple of days of yeah. rain and uh, yep. sideways rain against St. Anthony's. But, boy, these last few weeks have just been spectacular. And again, a good shout out to our friend uh, Uppers Pallier. For those of you that were in on the trivia question of a few weeks of what his brother's name it is, you are, if you guess Lowers, you are correct. <laughs> Lowers Pallier. You got these nice cushioned seats here in the press box, yep. too. Davis so Owens. comes after yep. an Owens deep. Thank you. Yes, sir. I was going to just bring that up. Yeah, well, I, I kind of get the. That's okay. Kind of got to look through the two windows. Yeah, you got. <laughs> I got the Porky Pig seat at that baseball game where he gets the first ticket, but he sits right behind the pole. <laughs> Good kick there by 
Shazami taken by Owens at the 15, 20. Trying to find a little room. He does over the 30. Going to get down to around the 34-yard line, 35. That's where St. Joe's will start. First and 10. Well, that's about the only thing that Prep hasn't shown tonight is the ability to get the kickoff deep. Most of the kicks fielded in the 15 to 20-yard line range. And now we got to see if the Marauders can take advantage here. So again, the I formation with Con Shafter and Davis. They try to give the ball to the up back. He's a little read option. Pitches it to Davis. And over the 40-yard line. Gain of about six. Second and four. Well, Cathedral Prep already uh, with one win under their belt versus the Western New York team as they took it to St. Francis, 49-14. They were up 49 nothing in that game before St. Francis punched in a couple of late touchdowns. And this one appears to be heading that same direction here unless the Marauders can get something turned around and fast. They break the huddle here on the right hash. Got a hustle inside of the I don't have to say what hash it is anymore because people can see it's That's on the right. right hash. All those radio skills we learned. Yeah. Gives the ball to Davis. Nothing there. Mm-hmm. Maybe back to the line of scrimmage. Third down. Yeah, a little difficulty with the exchange there. Davis had to kind of corral it, just bobbled up his chest as he received the handoff and wasn't able to get his legs underneath him there. So it sets up a third and three with 3.45 left in the half. I think the clock only stops if there's change of possession, right? I do believe. I but do. if there's an incomplete pass, the clock would continue to run. Perhaps. I think we're going to. We may learn. Here goes the uh, train. That's a, the all train's going to end up. Uh, Going by with St. Mary's of Lancaster there. Yeah. Hill throws left side and good read by Deputy D'Angelo again. Yeah, great. I interception think it was. He, what a, he undercut he, the route perfectly there. It's got to be uh, D'Angelo Malone, I'm guessing. Nope. Let's see. Uh, Shaquan Carson, sophomore, 5'9. They've got some good speed in their safety positions. I mean, that's a heck of a go-get. Throw, ball thrown a little behind. And they'll take over at their 41. we still got 3.15 to go here in quarter one. All the ones still in for our prep, it looks like. we got three receivers out in front of us here to the left. Empty backfield. Yep, and they give the ball to DeHart, and he's got blocking, and he's got running room midfield. Still on his feet, and he grinds his way to the St. Joe 41-yard line. Be interested to see how far this team goes in their Pennsylvania playoffs. Well, they've shown a lot. They've got speed, strength. This DeHart is a great runner. Yes, he He is. He runs physical. He's not, you know, he's a little bit on the slight side, but, boy, does he run hard. Yeah, they got a good quarterback. they got two solid receivers. Line play is big. You can see why they are where they are. Three receivers right, one left to hurt the lone back. And he throws it to him out in the short flat. And he's brought down inside the St. Joe 40 down to around the 37-yard line. Gain of about three. Maybe mark it to 38. 2.35 to go in the half. For, for the Marauder faithful, has been a, a long half of football. Five receivers now. He's going to throw it again. Bubble screen right side. He's got his man. He caught it with some blocking. Uh-oh. The 30 breaks a tackle. And inside the 25-yard line. Yeah, Castellani had him had him stop but wasn't able to make the tackle. And he picks up another 13 yards. Felix Shell again. Felix Manis hyphen Shell. Manis Shell <laughs> So, first down. I wonder if the mercy rule only kicks in in the second half. That could be. I don't know. 
One one back in the backfield. Bessler throws again, and it might have been tipped a little at the line. Incomplete intended for, I think that's number eight, Greenwall. Greenwalt, actually. Yeah, one of the 6 4 bookends along with Fessler's brother. Well, they are going to do the Hall of Fame at halftime. Hey, just what we were looking for. We're two. I was saying, I really hope the Hall of Fame inductions are at halftime. I'd hate to have missed them. <laughs> And they give the ball to DeHart. He's got great oh, block. Boy. I mean, their receiver's close. block. I mean, the block thrown by Charlie Fessler was just a perfect blocking. And easy into the end zone. 42, 41 nothing, with a minute and 46 to go here. Yipper. Going to be a tough ride back to Buffalo for the Marauders. Don't want to be the... Uh, pessimist but this is a game now you're concerned about getting out of here without any more injuries you've already lost two guys this evening Rod Payne with what looks to be a leg and his shoulder pad of a Miles Young on the sideline with a concussion yep so kick is good we and still got a minute 46 to go here and it looks like Payne's on crutches on the sideline yeah he does have crutches yep they may think it, 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 tentatively talking about a potential knee injury here we don't know the severity, so we will not speculate. It's not our position to do such a thing. I would just say lower body injury, yeah. as they would in the National Hockey lower, League. I have a lower body, body injury from the ride down. Hey, look, <laughs> at they got the motorcade on the track there. All those convertibles. What? My, what are you over there. there. Over there. Over there. Oh, the yeah. Side. Okay, yeah. You know, it's like old-timers day. It's when the guy sits on the back of the back seat and waving to the crowd. Be careful when they go by that grassy knoll, though. <laughs> <laughs> the grassy knoll. Oh, yeah. boy. That, that's, those, that's what you call 42 to nothing. 42 comment. nothing, folks. <laughs> so it's either we, we turn off the volume and you can squatch the video. We could do that. 4 nothing. The, uh, the Admirals are beating the Ottawa Senators, the Binghamton. T- or the Binghamton Senators, the team of uh, Cole Schneider's team. How about those Sabres, by the way? Oh. I right was there. there last night. I lived it. They're in Ooh. for a tough stretch. And here's the boot, and it's taken by Davis. Nigel Davis. And he brings it up the middle, running room out to the 37-yard line. We got, got a flag here, late flag. We'll see. Ooh, the foul's going to be on. It was... Klopp got tied up with yeah. somebody, and we'll see what the flag is. My guess is you may get a hold out of that. As he, usually the uh, blocking guy gets gets that penalty in that situation. He was on top of him. Hey, the Admirals score again. 5 nothing. The Admirals are the farm team of... I don't know. I don't know either. I'm going to throw it out there and say it's the Rangers. I don't know. You know what? It looks like they waved the flag off. Wow, it's a tough first period. Five zip. Oosh. Oosh. Three, three, three two-man advantages against the Binghamton Sens. Well, tomorrow So what night. do you do here, buddy? You take three running plays and get out of Dodge uh-huh. here? Tell me you want to shorten halftime. Version. Just tell them we're getting water. We're coming right back out. Yep. We don't even need to go in at halftime. No, you got to go in. I know. Yep. These goofy football rules. Nigel Davis, first run, goes way outside. Hey, tomorrow night, another NASCAR makes. And another makes, flag came in. I'm sorry, buddy. No, another NASCAR makes his Division One debut. His uh, young Philip, my nephew, will be lacing up the skates. He'll be on the fourth line for the Purple Eagles as they take on the Griffins tomorrow night at the Dwyer Arena. So... Get a chance to watch him in his first game as a freshman. Excited for that for the young man. And he gets right into the, uh, what do they call that rivalry? The Canisius Niagara rivalry? No, they got that uh, bri- the Battle of the Bridge or the something. Battle of the Bridge, they do have that, yep. That's a big uh, units promotion, Battle of the Bridge. and uh, Blood drives in January, Canisius versus Niagara. <laughs> I, I believe the Eagles have won all the blood drive contests. <laughs> 
since we've been doing it three years now. Penalty went on Pratt. Marauders will have yep. a first and one. Fakes the handoff, rolls to his right. Thought maybe he was going to try to throw under a lot of pressure, and he's hit and might have the first down, though. That's a pretty gutty run. He's, yeah, it he's is. a tough kid, Tyler Hill. He was thinking about just throwing it out of, out of play, but uh, he said, you know what, I'm going to take you on. Well, I think it's a first down here. Certainly is. Certainly is. Stop that clock for a second. Move those chains. Wind that clock. We'll see what kind of experienced officiating crew we have here. Wind that, baby. Obviously, he's in no hurry to get his fish right. <laughs> there we go. I mean, if it takes us three hours to go back, yeah, be home by about 1 a.m. Oh, boy. <laughs> Hill under center now. Everybody thinks this broadcast is glamorous. You know? <laughs> oh, all, oh, all, all kinds of jumping. we got all, all kinds, kinds of, of stuff jumping. going on here. Yeah, the whole left side of the Marauder line got off the mark a little early, so that'll mark that'll march them back five yards, thirty nine seconds, first and fifteen. Boy, they have a real parking problem here though. Yes they do, a night like tonight. So the clock runs inside. 25, 29 seconds. This could be the last play of the 13 half. 13 on the L shot clock. Or the snap clock. And Hill's going to... Oh, miscommunication. He's going to read option there. Yep, and... There are fumble there. Yep. yep. It's covered up by Hill. It. I think it's all best that this half ends here for the yep. Marauders. And right here at 42, and that's what's going to happen. Well, hey, we're at the half. It's 42 nothing. It's been all Ramblers. We're going to take our customary 15-minute break here. And uh, we'll be back to bring you half number two, excuse me, 20-minute break here in Pennsylvania. But it's 42 nothing. the Ramblers. Mark Simon, Paul Naska. We'll be back for half number two. Stay with us.
Hey, folks, we're at the half. It's 42 nothing. Cathedral Prep in front. We've got about four or five minutes here before we will resume second half action. So those of you that are still tuned in, stay with us. We will be back with you in a couple of minutes.
Well, if you just turned on, folks, we just had the kickoff, and Jake DeHart takes it all the way for a touchdown for the Ramblers. Wow. I didn't even have my headset on here. They started so fast. Looks like it will be about a 90-yard return. And the Ramblers started off with a touchdown. And Jake DeHart, he can fly. He's, he's the real deal. The 5'9 senior, so we'll just wait to kick the point here. High snap, down, and it is good. So we played 16 seconds here in the second half. 49 nothing. the Ramblers. Coach, you're back. Well, yeah, I did uh, had a chance to... Uh, See some people at halftime, Coach Hess of the uh, Cathedral Prep Baseball team, and then I ran into my nephew down there, up from Pittsburgh, and uh, <clears throat> Rich Pagliaroli, his roommate, and Jeff Belanco, who goes to school down here at Gannon. Yep. Well, in case you missed it. I did. Oh, good. 49 zip. I saw it. You can run the, uh, let's see, what that could be the uh, unit's halftime stats tonight. Yeah, uh, for St. Joe's, 25 carries, 39 yards. For Cathedral Prep, 10 for 105. Mm. Passing, zero for the Marauders. Yeah, it was just that was a pregnant pause, as they say on the radio. <laughs> Prep for 141, 9 for 19. Ew. <coughs> 246 so. total offense versus uh, 39. Hey, this is nice. Timmy, you ought to take a look at this, buddy. you got to get a computer up there and a printer. got to get him a little mini printer and get him a... Get him we got to bring them into the 21st century. Yes. Is that the century we're in? I think so. Okay. Anyway, I got to see some others. Jeff Belanca from Gannon. They're going to honor the Gannon baseball team tomorrow at the football game, Mark. Oh, good. You want to drive back or just stay over? No, sir. <laughs> well, you said we should have made it a couple-day event. Well, next, that, next time the we next come time. back. I don't think there is one. <laughs> Here's the kick taken by... Cordell Owens at the 20, finds a seam up the middle, and he's going to be brought down at the 35-yard line. And we'll see if the Marauders can pick up the pieces here in half two. There seemed to be a little sentiment at halftime that uh, Cathedral Prep didn't need to go into their two-minute drill up 35 nothing at the end of the first half. Yeah, I didn't uh, mention that earlier. But uh, now it's all about perseverance and... Uh, Imagine we'll see a lot of twos on, hopefully, on both or on the prep side. Marauders well, don't have a lot of you've twos. You've already tonight. seen a lot of twos from the Marauders. Yeah, I mean, yeah, that's, the numbers are slim. So, shotgun for Tyler Hill. He'll quarterback, I imagine, the rest of the way here. Okono in motion, or Davis in motion. They give him the ball, finds a big hole, and breaks it into Cathedral Prep territory to the 42 yard line. Big run there, 17 and 8, 25 yards if I do the math. Wow, you want an abacus? No, nope, I can do it. I got enough fingers. <laughs> Everybody views, hands their fingers up here. Well, that was an a interesting little critical here. You know, John Murphy has a spotter, and he's got a math guy. No, and, I know. listen, know. listen, listen. I know. I get it. I get it. Well, AdPro, uh, happy to sponsor tonight's game, but both uh, coaches, sets of coaches in their Nike coaching gear on the sidelines. Hill, the quarterback. Owens to his right. Two receivers left, two right. Little ah. pass to Nigel Davis. You know, that's little the bubble screen, won't screen. That's the inexperience of Hill, a quarterback. He's got some time. He's got to set his feet. He's got to get a grip on the ball. You know, he's got some room there. But a nice halftime event. I was down at the field side. I got a chance to talk to their athletic director for a couple of moments. Nice job they've done down here with this facility. And you got to see the concession, the concourse down there. It's incredible. Yep. Absolutely incredible. Three lines all the way out. It's just a terrific facility. It's, yeah, great, nice. to, it's great to have real estate, huh? Yes, it is. <laughs> nice Hall of Fame induction ceremony. And Hill gives it to Davis, tries to run up the gut. Nothing there. Back to the line of scrimmage. 
Number 45 on the tackle. That's Jermaine Hunter, six foot junior out of Erie, Pennsylvania. Martyrs come out. That's Connor McKenna heading to the sideline. Kili Aki Ali O'Connor checks in. Oh, the Marauders got to figure out a way to get healthy here in the next two well, weeks. I think, I dare say, the most valuable player on this team down the stretch could be Celia. Celia. <laughs> <laughs> got Spina wide right here. Owens, they fake the ball to Good read. Davis. Read option. Hill keeps it, and he's going to get the most he can out of it. I think he's got a first down, and he does to the – and a late flag comes in here. We'll see what that's all about. He's a tough kid, boy. He is just a warrior for this team. Last week, congratulations to him on a Conley Cup nomination. Personal foul called on the Marauders. Wasn't holding. No, personal was, foul. You know what? I'm going get to get a chance to see it on a replay here, Mark. Let me just see if I can see anything at the end. Oh, yeah, there was a – yep. That was Nigel Davis coming back at the back of the pile. And I just was informed he'll be receiving the Phil Scafidi Award. Oh, that's terrific news. Great. Well-deserved. Well, you know what's interesting? In a line of great uh, recipients of the Phil Scafidi. Yeah, you know, what's, you know what's interesting with Tyler Hill's Conley Cup nomination? You know, he, at that point in time he's playing tight end and defensive line, but he still doesn't get a Trench Trophy nomination. <laughs> He's been he's had a heck of a year for this team. He's got a chance to be an all Western New Yorker the way he's played, especially on the defensive yeah, line. You know, it's just been a joy to see him mature and grow as a person and a player. Yep. And uh he'll be playing college football somewhere next year. Yes, he will. Got great snapping ability. Yeah, believe me Whoops, that's a little problem there on the read option with Owens and Hill. Oof. And nothing there gets maybe they're going to lose one at the, to the 47. That could have been a penalty there. Little little shot to the head with the arm, almost like a little Deacon Smith forearm slap. Look at that spider going after that mosquito now. <laughs> oh, he's got him in the web. That's ball game over, Mr. <laughs> mosquito. <laughs> <laughs> oh, boy. That's all I can say. <laughs> No, I got a chance to talk to Tyler today. I was over at school with some of the shadows who were coming through, and he's very excited about the prospects, getting a little interest, so hopefully the best for him. They're going to throw, and a bad throw. A flag came in in the middle. We'll see. It's intercepted by number 15. That's Calvin Hunter. Another flag comes in after the tackle. Flags in there. The 5'11 senior from Hammett, Pennsylvania, picked that one off. I think these are both going to go against the Marauders, though, Mark. The first one's right in the spot of holding. Holding, yep. And the second one could have been a leading with the helmet. I'm not sure what. You know, there are some some subtleties and differences in the rules down here. So we'll see. We'll wait for the call. Well, they're talking to St. Joe's. Uh, nope. Oh, no, 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 that's no, an, I, I think that wondering. was more of an admonishment. Yeah. Uh, young Mr. Klopp. Chalk block Chalk was block the first. Again, yeah. He's trying to understand what maybe why. Uh, getting a. Little ruling from the official. Every, you know, you got to worry about it now in these games. Forty nine nothing. Fuses getting short. You well, know, goofy stuff happening. And you chop block straightforward. If a, if a player is engaged with another player, you cannot go low on him. And that, believe it or not, you don't see it called a ton, but it is an easy call to make when someone is engaged with another offensive player. If another lineman comes in from the side and goes low, that's an automatic. So the number two offense in for prep Sean Harris, the quarterback. 5'10 senior from Fairview, Pennsylvania. And he hands the ball off to Angelo D'Angelo Malone. He's playing a little defense earlier in the uh, first half. Well, Nigel Davis in the first half, 18 for 33 yards, plus that 25-yarder, which will give him... Oh, we were... We Dueling stat- statisticians; those numbers are not right, there, sir. <laughs> no, nope, we're gonna have a gonna have to have a stat off. Interesting, right, but we'll be back in Buffalo by the time that begins. <laughs> so he hands the ball off to D'Angelo again. Swarmed under there by a host of Marauders. Michael Myers down at the bottom of the pile. Acono, as well as Cordell Owens. It's D'Angelo Malone. 
When was the last time the Marauders were shut out there, our statistician guru? Shakes his head and doesn't know. I believe it's been a streak of 37 weeks. Is that right? No, I have no idea. No. Okay. But I, can, I just wanted to see if I could sell it. Got to do better than that. I wasn't really committed. Not in the Gilbert era, though. Somebody yelled out. Okay. Whoops. Oh, the quarterback was pounded there by Cordell Owens. Whoa. Pass went to the ground harmlessly, and it'll be fourth down. We'll get a look at the Ouch. punt team again from prep. And we are in the mercy zone. The clock runs even though it was an incomplete pass. Small wonders, my friend. Two thousand and seven, the last time the Marauders were shut out, that was twice against the Frannies and Aquinas in the two thousand and seven season. Well, it's been a while. A little rugby a little style punt there, punt. yeah, a little rugby punt. I like that. And it's going to roll and be down at the thirty-five yard line. Let's see, that's a two and a five, seven yard punt. No, twenty-five yard. Oh, punt. is that what you meant? Yeah. I didn't want to sell you out over the air. (laughs) Well, none of this capacity crowd has left yet either. Unfortunately, that's going to make getting out of the parking lot harder. Not when you see my parking spot. Not when you see my spot, buddy. Do you know how we're going home from here? No. No, I'll leave that up to you. better get some advice. I'll leave it up to you. No, I don't know. I don't know. So do not depend on me. Just look for an arrow that's pointing I'm going to ask one of these gentlemen on the other side of the glass here. Well, I imagine we got to turn left. As long as he's not, they're not one of the ones that gave us the directions to we get gotta here. we got to turn left and head back to that. Uh, to 79? Yeah. Okay. And what do we got here? Timeout. Called by St. Joe's. We go 79 south to the 90. South or north? And south. We took oh, 79 yeah. north getting here. Okay. I paid attention. I only took a nap from uh, Dunkirk to Silver Creek. So timeout, Marauders, 5.04 here in uh, quarter three. With those four touchdowns. Another uh, yeah. video blackout here. Don't uh, don't despair, folks. I'm good. Your laptop is on a 30-second delay. All right. Well, with those four t- touchdown passes in the first half, Fessler now with 14 touchdowns, four interceptions on the season. I think they're going to be my uh, team to watch in the Pennsylvania playoffs on Fox, uh, Pittsburgh, or one of those channels because they probably will broadcast the four A's and the three A games. I would think so. Um, High school sports have become big yeah. business, especially football. First play to Davis. Uh, Davis has got to do a little better job of letting that block develop by Conch after he kind of got out in front of him. If he can let that develop, then he can read which way the con shafter's taking him. But he went to the outside early, and con shafter wasn't able to get off to the block. The cornerback peeled off and was able to run Davis out of bounds. Well, when do you say enough of uh, Nigel I, in the game? I would have perhaps. Granted, they got their twos, and that's going to make a difference. But I would have uh, done that much earlier. Might be your computer, bud. No. Maybe. You got tons of battery. I don't know. Well, you're on a 30 second delay. We're going to be good. <laughs> Shut it down, my friend. Read option, pitch to Davis from Hill. And he breaks the tackle, gets up the sideline, can't outrun the last linebacker there. And the ball goes out of bounds at the 40 yard line. So we've lost our video, but we still have our audio. And now we got our video back. 345 clock runs. 49 nothing was all prepped tonight. 42 points in the first half. 250 yards of offense. The Marauders only 39. Rod Payne went out early. Nigel Davis 
Some troubles early with a fumble. Bad block punt. And the Marauders just never even could get on track in this one. So Davis runs to the 44-yard line. Bring up second down five. Tyler Hill's getting tired just running back and forth from the sidelines. <laughs> I'm getting tired watching him. Well, it is a long jaunt when you're on that right hash mark, as the Marauders are. Okono wide to the left. Cordell Owens wide right. I formation. They give it to Conshafter, and he goes to the 47-yard line. He'll be short by a yard. Third and one. Clock runs 227. For you Binghamton Senators fans, they're down 5 nothing to the Admirals. Whose parent team, we have no idea. Where are they from? I don't know. They're the Admirals. They're from the Navy. Well, right? What's their first name? It's the Navy. It's Air Force, right? Norfolk? Oh, the Norfolk oh, Admirals. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I, I knew that. from. That's a Washington and... Uh, Bullets, what are they called? Washington Capitals? Yeah. Is it really? No, you have no idea. Well, well you would think the guy watching the game would Leggio know. pays for who? Hershey. Hershey's the uh, home. Well, we'll see what's happening in local high school football here. We'll check Twitter's verse here for you. Josie Altador has another goal for the U.S. as they lead Jamaica 2 nothing as they make their run toward the World Cup. Nice. Williamsville South, a big one back home, up 14-6 at the half. Well, we'll get we'll get a bit later update here. Hill in the uh, under center. Looks like Josh Jackson the up back now, and he pitches the ball to Conshafter, and he gets a good block from Spina and gets down to the 41-yard line, gain of nine. It'll be second and one, and we've hit the one-minute mark here in the third quarter. Nigel Davis, 20 carries, 106 yards today. Wow, they had fire uh, baton twirlers at the Williamsville South McKinley halftime tonight. Well, even the Fordham Prep Band looks like they're taking their drums and going home. Oh, no, maybe just a little union break. I'm not sure. <laughs> yep, I think it's breakdown time. Beat the traffic. Oh, no, no, he just had to adjust his drums. Hill under center. He fakes to the up back, gives it to Conshafter, finds room on the left side, and it'll be a first down run out of bounds at the 34-yard line. They don't stop the clock. That must be a second-half rule, Paul. Yes, I, I believe it is. So, Because that clock is running even, on, even when they set the chains. So it's a good rule. Especially for the broadcast teams. So we've played three now, 49-0. The Ramblers in front, 12 minutes to go. Prep coming to Buffalo bus next year. Ramblers will be at uh, 845 Kenmore Avenue next season. Don't forget, next Thursday night, 630, the match, Canisius St. Joe's Volleyball. The yeah. inaugural volleyball broadcast. And soccer. Soccer is at 4.30. That will be not a, not a broadcast. Because my contract says I can't do two games in a day. McKinley pulls within 14-12. The two-pointer after missed. 10-28 left. It's a big one. Oh, nice. Cleve Hill all over Tonawanda, 36-6. Next Saturday, 1 o'clock. Out on uh, Laverick Road there. There you go, and Sheldon. Yep, Laverick and Sheldon, the home of the Lancers. Marauders will be there. The following Saturday, Timon comes to town. Breast Cancer Awareness Day at St. Joe's. And then November 2nd, Saturday, 1 o'clock. St. Joe's Canisius it could be for first place. A lot of the marbles, as they say. Yep. And the hard count draws the... 
Ramblers offsides, so it'll be first and five. Can they get that score to ruin the shutout? Now that's what you're looking for in this spot. Coach Naska playing a little Russell. Is that what it's called? Sure. I don't know. Never played it. So I formation. I think Nigel Davis is done for the day. They give the ball to Con Shafter. Breaks it to the outside. Can't outrun the Rambler defenders. So maybe no gain. Let's see what they do here. Nah, probably no gain. So it'll be second and five. Prisbala, the other running back. Or Prisbala, right? Would be the Prisbala. Prisbilla. Yes, sir. Not Bala, it's a Billa. Prisbilla. So second, they give him one, second and four. It's on to 28. Marauders trying to get on the scoreboard here. Prisbilla and Kanchi after the running back. So Kono left with Cordell Owens right. Pitch the ball to Kanchi after. Fouls his blockers, and he's going to get the first down somewhere around the 20 yard line. You mark it at the 19. Much of the crowd still here. Well, it's, it is. I wonder where they go on a Friday night after uh, Rambler football. I don't know. I don't know if they have What's a Curry's. What's their version of Curry's? One of our hosts, Curry's, Gigi's, Sinatra's, Jovi's. Yep. Did they miss anybody? Franco's. Yeah, Franco's, sure. Get the pitch to Conshafter. And, of Brings course. Brings it down to the 17-yard line. And, of course, always Butler's Wine and Spirits. Yep. Our friend Mark Butler. JJ's for breakfast. Yes, sir. Get the double-double, 450. Inside 10 minutes now. Hills under center. Going with the the ball to Conch after. Yep, he finds a hole close to the end zone, and he's hit just short. Let's see. Going to be at at about the one-yard line. Yeah, that's what it looks like. Maybe the one and a half. Yep, uh, one. Good run there of 16 yards for Conch after. So the Marauders got a chance to put points on the board here. Let's see if they can do it. Prep puts in their big lineman number 74, Royce Campbell, 310 pounder. Just uh, kind of run away from him here. Rambled on the field for the Ramblers. (laughs) Let's see if Hill keeps it himself. Nope, handoff gives it to Conchafter oh. and the Guess new who? one there. I don't know, was it? It was nope. their other big guy. I'll tell you him in a second. You get me a number there. Seventy-two, maybe seventy. I'm sorry, these numbers are very tight. Yeah, it was seventy-two. Wow, it's Caleb Desenzo. But Royce Campbell, 74, looking for number 75. Andrew Angert is 307-pounder. Oh, boy. That's some beef up front. So they're at the three-yard line now, second down and goal. Might watch for a bootleg here. Yep. They oh. pitch, going to run a sweep to the right side. Can he get any blocking? Nope, not enough to get into the end zone. Knocked out of bounds at around the two. No, I still think you got a chance at seeing bootleg here on the third down play. They've kind of set it up with the run to the right, then a pitch to the right, a little sweep. Let's see if Coach Gilbert will give Hill a chance to beat somebody to the corner here. So the ball spotted at the two. 
Now well, tonight, of course, at school, you got the freshman overnight going on. Good luck to those working that one. <laughs> Mr. Schneider sitting next to us, of course. Must be nuts. Oh, must be nice. No. Yeah, right. Hand the ball off to Conchie after. Oh, oh he got a hit. hole there, and somebody for the Rambler defense closed it quickly. I thought he was in. Yeah, I think that was number 50, Mark. Number 50? Yes, sir. Number 50 in your program is Matt Wolf. So fourth down. Fourth and goal. The best part, my friend, is there's six minutes and 47 seconds left. Yeah. Come on, get one in here. Get that seven on the board. Always looks better than this goose egg. He's going to throw the ball, and it's caught. Touchdown, Marauders. Can't catch McKenna. the number. Connor McKenna? Yep. So they Move. fake out the Ramblers with a little play-action pass. That'll be the Marauder first completion of the night. First, Really? First one of the night? Yep. One yard passing oh, for the Marauders. Three on yards, the right? Get three yard pass. Okay. okay. They go for two here now, so it's 49 6. Six minutes, 16 seconds. So the streak continues of at least one point in that game since 2007. Now oh, they're going to kick it. Davis in, kick up, and good. Magoo with a nice grab in the end zone there. 49 the 7 point. now. Yeah, we passed that airport on the way here. We should have taken should have, a little yeah, uh, we could have been flying, charter. Yeah. Have Mr. Schneider pick us jet. up in the bus. Is there a Marauder jet? I'm not sure <laughs> there is. Oh, <laughs> well, very abbreviated post game show this evening, folks. We have to get back on the road. Nah, I got a feeling we'll be we'll do a little better going back. Could be. We zigged when we should have zagged, I think. Uh, good point. Well, not much energy left in this crowd. This game's long been decided. Everyone more or less. Not in much a energy left setting. in this broadcast team. <laughs> True. Truth be told. True that, sir. Beautiful stadium, nice press box, double decker. Yeah. Very long. Yeah, it's nice someone takes care of the broadcast teams, too. Beautiful. Although we could have used a little Windex. I was looking through the window on the other side. They no, they had the Windex uh, last week at St. Francis. Yes, they did. Oh, she got pancakes in there? What has she got in it? Huh? I don't know. She's got some Tupperware. I'm wondering what's in there. Oh. Could, looks like pancakes. Could be. So Davis is going to kick it away. Kick taken by one of the middlemen at the 25-yard line. Trying to cut it back now the right side. Oops, I don't want to go that way. I'm going to go back to the left where I came from. And he goes out down at the 30-yard line. That was number 10. Oh, that for a five-yard return. Sam Sweeney, the abbreviated spelling, (laughs) S-W-E-N-Y. I'd like to buy a vowel. No, it looks like the uh, bass drum guys are going to load it up and start uh, yep. marching down. Uh, they're part of the union. They're not allowed to play past 9.15 per union contract. Clock runs now. Whoa, bad snap. Picked up by the quarterback. Yeah. <laughs> and he rambles ahead for two yards. That just rolled back to him there. A little bit of a loose snap. Well, if I remember the last time we were here two years ago, the Ramblers ran up close to 700 yards, if I correct. Yeah, they were led by Shaquan Pulliam, the quarterback who ran for 465 on his own. He did. That game was at the uh, Erie Civic Center, if I remember correctly. They got a lot of arenas here, football stadiums. Nice job by Cordell Owens there to play the quarterback in the pitch game. 
Let's and he'll it. take him down for a one-yard gain. But they do it. You know, you think about it. they got a lot of football stadiums. Well, this that seat 3,000, you know. Well, quite a game day experience here. This, this is a nice setting. It's good to see this down here. Night football. Hope everyone gets home safely, but it's a terrific atmosphere. Especially that you and I get home safely. That's important. Very, very important. And they hand the ball off. Good run there. Yeah, I think he might have enough for the first. He powers over the 40. That's, that's number 26. Oh. No. Bryce Boyd. Just a hair short, actually. Uppers, if you're still listening, why? <laughs> <laughs> well, we hope you're feeling better. And we'll get you back. Uh, when's his expected return date? date? He'll be back for the timing game. He'll be dressed in uh, pink as well. Maybe a, a pink knee brace for him. Well, perhaps going to go for it here on fourth down. Fourth and one, four minutes. Not sure I'm liking this. And, oh! Bad handoff there, but he's going to do enough to get the first down. We're three minutes and 45 seconds left to go. For those of you still listening, we appreciate your attention. Yeah, just a tough night for the Marauders. They're going to have to regroup, get some guys healthy over the next couple of weeks. They'll face St. Mary's next Saturday. One o'clock start from St. Mary's High School. Well, you know, Paul, you, you put it in perspective. And, you know, tough loss to Aquinas. You come here and play a very good football team. And a big run out to the 30-yard line. I can bet you the ire is quite up on the far sideline. I'm my sure, yep. Run it. Well, you can only do so much. I mean, you're going to hand off. If well, you could have kicked it away, certainly, on fourth down, too. Uh, that's true. I, I would, I'd agree with that. But, you know, they're, hey, they're where they are. They need to be in the league. Yep. You get the St. Mary's game. You get time at home. You, you know, take care of what really matters here. Get guys healthy. Hope he's not going to throw the ball here. No. No, read option. Got some room up the middle. Yep, they do. 2.35 to go here. Good tackle there for the Marauders by your guy. You can have the rosters. I don't need the rosters, buddy. Well, but your guy, to Danny. Throw them in the trash. Your guy, Danny Gollin, with a good tackle ah, there. Danny Gollin. We love Danny Gollin. Clock running, 2.13. I, I, can't we just take a few knees here and go home? Well, we don't. We could just get up and go. We in could. form of protest. Shotgun it again. And Spina with a good tackle there inside the 20. Minute and 53. I think we've told you all you need to know, folks, about everything that's going on at St. Joe's. Yep. SJCI.com will give you everything. Check the sports schedules. To check the broadcast schedule. A lot of events for you to uh, attend. What's that? Oh, Coach Schneider's done. Norfolk is done. Five nothing. The Admirals. The farm team of the Anaheim Ducks. Oh, Anaheim Duck farm team. Wow. They run the ball to the ten yard line. A minute and twenty to go. Well, folks, that's going to about do it for me. Oh, hey. Oh, I was just trying to disconnect you, buddy. We're in the speed up. We're in the speed up cleanup. You don't need to see. I'm sure you wanted to go. You want me to plug you back in? We can hear you. can hear you if you speak loud into my microphone. No, geez, you know, you can't be doing that. 45 seconds. I'll bring it home, folks. Such a warrior. <laughs> oh, they run the option and they're in. Touchdown. Not sure I'm liking that. 56 seconds. You want your mic? You want it back on? No, I, I'm not liking that. Didn't need that one. Nope. I agree. I agree.
Yep. So we got 32 seconds to go. This will be the fastest breakdown in history. So the kick is good, 56 nothing, And we're done. This broadcast crew is going to break it down. It's 56 to 7, 30 seconds to go. Thanks for listening in. We're heading back to Buffalo. We'll be there in three hours. Good night, everybody.